Hello comrades and welcome back to another ship review episode and in today's review I'm going to cover the premium Soviet tier 8 light cruiser the Mikhail Kutusov. I'll go over stats, recommended modules, recommended captain skills and then I'll show you this ship in battle. Finally at the end of this episode I'm going to give you my overall impressions and whether or not you should buy her or not. So without much further hesitations let's get going. In terms of survivability the Mikhail Kutusov is okay I would say. In terms of HP she's got a good amount 40,700 HP gives her even more HP than the Japanese tier 8 premium heavy cruiser the Otago so in that sense the Otago is actually above average but her armor is really really weak uh, maximum citadel armor only a hundred millimeters which means that when you're running into a battleship, the Kutusov can take massive damage all around everywhere from a battleship. So she's not that good in terms of survivability. Furthermore, while the Otago has an HP repair kit, the Kutusov has a smoke, and it's a rather short duration cruiser smoke, which isn't all that great. I mean, it allows you to escape stuff, but in a way, I'd really hope that she would have that extra bit of HP heal, even. One of the other issues with the Kutusov is even though she's got a good HP pool, but the fact that she has light armor is the fact that she's also huge, which means that, comparatively speaking, she's not that hard to hit. If you take a look at the size of the Kutusov, she's really big, and that size is one of her weaknesses because it is just going to make you that easier ship to hit. Um, so let's move on to her main guns, and then I'll eventually come back to that size issue a little bit later. The Kutuzov has 152mm guns. They're somewhat comparable to actually Cleveland guns, except they have better shell arcs, and the shell velocity seems to be a bit better, which in game seems to indicate slightly better abilities to penetrate things. Take a look at the actual stats on them. 6.7 rounds a minute rate of fire with no commander skills is a bit below the upgraded Cleveland's guns, which can manage 7.5. 180 degree turn time, 33.3 seconds, isn't terrible, it isn't all that great, considering that, that means the guns will take a while to actually turn around. However, with the captain skills, it will cut down a little bit. Max dispersion is 143 meters without any mods or captain skills, which is okay. I mean, most light cruiser guns are generally okay dispersion-wise. Um, HE shell damage, 2200, that's identical to what the Cleveland has. 12% chance of fire is also decent for light cruiser. AP shell damage, 100 more than the Cleveland at 3,300. But again, when you compare those damage numbers to what a heavy cruiser would have, it's obviously going to be less. However, it does make up for it with the rate of fire. Firing range is okay at 15.9 kilometers. However, if you get advanced firing training, you'll really push the range. I think close to actually 19 point something kilometers. Can't fully remember the exact number, but it's 20% more of whatever 15.9 is. Secondary armament is the six dual... 100 millimeter guns and you know they, they do a little bit but I mean it's a light cruiser you're not really depending on the secondaries all that much. The Mikhail Kutuzov has torpedo tubes which is something that the Cleveland does not and that means that in certain situations the Kutuzov does have that extra little bit of firepower so if you're dealing with let's say something like a battleship or just you know a dying salvo there are torpedoes which can do something at least in terms of damage and they're actually quintuple launchers too which helps because it's five torpedoes in one shot torpedo range is good eight kilometers uh they reload in 131 seconds the torpedoes max damage is 14,400, a little bit low but still can do a sizable amount of damage and the torpedoes aren't all that slow going 60 knots so the katusov's torpedoes are okay however they do have rather limited arcs which means that oftentimes you're going to have difficulties really getting your torpedoes around on, say, let's say a battleship, because you're going to be presenting that easy-to-hit broadside. So that is something that you have to consider when you're playing the Kutuzov. In terms of AA right now, the Kutuzov is really, really strong. These 100mm dual-purpose guns, they do a lot of damage, 90 damage per second at 5 kilometers, which you can stretch out even higher with advanced firing training, basic firing training, and AA module. So Kutuzov's AA can be really, really strong. However, rumor has it that the Kutuzov is a 
model for a new A model in the near future. And we're not really sure what that means yet, but there is a possibility that with that change, the AA is actually going to become rather average. We're not 100% on this at all because it is just a, a rumor change that's going to happen. But you know, do take this A kind of uh, section with a little bit of grain of salt. In terms of maneuverability, the Kutuzov is nice and fast at 33 knots. She's got a decent speed there. If you throw in a flag, it's going to get closer to 34.6, I believe. However, like I mentioned earlier, one of the big problems with the Kutuzov is the size, and the turning radius isn't all that great. Rudder shift time is actually pretty good, 6.5 seconds. However, the size of the cruiser is a little bit problematic, as even with your great maneuverability, she's still going to take shells just because of how big she is. And trying to, I guess, dodge and weave and, and maneuver in an active effort to dodge shells isn't as effective in the ship as in other light cruisers, potentially. Her concealment is all right, 14.5 kilometers on the surface, 9.3 from the air. If you throw on the concealment module and concealment expert skill on the captain, she is a reasonably stealthy ship. Um, I believe she is capable of doing a little bit of invisible firing, but you know, considering on the average battle there might be things like destroyers or whatever in between you and the actual ships that you might be shooting at, um, you're likely to be spotted anyways. And like I said with the ship before, her armor isn't all that good, and if she takes hits from battleships, it will hurt. All right, so there is one special thing about the Kutuzov, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, is that unlike other cruisers, um, she doesn't get a catapult fighter, but she does get smoke. So that is interesting. I mean, she's got a little bit of that short duration Iwaki Alpha kind of smoke that the Iwaki Alpha has. And it can be useful for falling away, although it's not destroyer smoke, so you can't hide in it and really just sit there and shoot at stuff because the smoke will dissipate rather quickly and you will end up actually getting shot to death. In terms of upgrades, here's what I would recommend. And there's sort of two ways to set up the Katusov. One, you can really abuse the Katusov's AA and just knock down planes. So in that sense, I would say you can go AA guns modification two. Oh yeah, by the way, the first one just gave me battery modification one. You want to minimize chances of magazines or turrets getting knocked out. So on the second one, I would say AA guns modification two is a pretty decent module just to boost that AA range a little bit. Uh, gun fire control system modification one is also a viable one just to improve that dispersion, especially if you have advanced firing training and you get 90 kilometer range. A uh, better dispersion is going to help you land more shots, so that's definitely something to consider. Third slot damage control system modification one. Fourth slot definitely get steering gears modification two. Even though the rudder shift time is only 6.5, get it, it will help. And then finally, um, here you have a choice, you can either go for Concealment System Modification 1 just to hide better, or you can get Target Acquisition just to help you know see destroyers in smoke from a slightly greater distance or to spot those torpedoes a little bit earlier. If I'm going to put all the modules on that I have set up for the ship, I would have gone Main bo Battery Modification 1. Uh, I actually went with Gunfire Control because I generally prefer shooting at stuff. Um, damage Control System and Steering Gears, and with Steering Gears here. As you can tell with the rudder shift time module, the rudder shift time drops to 5.2 seconds, which is pretty good. And finally, I went with the concealment system, and that drops my surface detectability to 13 kilometers. So definitely pretty decent all-around ship. And with the gun fire control module, the dispersion drops down to 133 meters at 15.9. In terms of the captain, I've generally used a destroyer captain for it, which actually works pretty well, and I've gone with situation awareness on the first row. Typically speaking, nowadays, situational awareness has become really, really useful, so I would typically just get that on the first row. And then expert marksman on the second one, superintendent on the third row, and superintendent mainly because there's those smoke charges, which can actually be quite nice to have an additional one of. On the fourth row, advanced firing training just to boost that range, and on the fifth row, I went with concealment expert. That's okay. Alternatively, you can also do a slightly different build, and that's going with situational awareness on the first row, Expert Marksman on the second row, Superintendent on the third, Advanced Firing Training on the fourth, Sacrificing Concealment Expert on the fifth row, and instead putting those five points into Demolition Expert and Basic Firing Training. And this alternative one is going to give you better chance of setting fires and also shoot a little bit faster. And it really depends on what you like to do as a player. Would you like the additional opportunities to blink out and be able to fall back, or do you want the extra chances to set stuff on fire? That's really up to you. 
And that's pretty much all that I can do uh, from a port view about the ship. So let's see how she performs in battle and I'll give you my observations about her in actual gameplay. One of the things that I've noticed and I sort of mentioned earlier is the fact that the Katusov has seemingly pretty good shell velocity and this translates to one, a pretty good arc and two, it seems to allow the Katusov to pen things reasonably well. I'm curious if this is something that is sort of following the trend with the Murmansk, which also has higher velocity shells. So I'm not 100% sure on, uh, on that, but it does seem that at times when you're going up against ships that are presenting somewhat of a broadside, you have a pretty decent chance of actually hitting for some damage. So in this particular situation here, the enemy Yamato has presented me with a broadside for a little while, now he's turning away. But during that period of time, I was able to land some pretty nice salvos with armor piercing. I'm primarily going to talk about armor piercing compared to high explosive because high explosive is very self-explanatory. It's very similar to the Cleveland. Um, actually, in terms of damage and fire chance, it's pretty much identical, so not really much to say. But the armor piercing does seem to be quite good as against this Yamato, I'm able to deal something in the vicinity of 42,000 damage in about um, about two minutes, I think. And that's not bad, considering this is a tier 8 light cruiser firing 152mm shells against a heavily armored tier 10 battleship. As you can tell, the salvos are doing reasonably good damage, as each time it's hitting for you know, 4,000, 5,000. I've had salvos as high as 9,000 with an armor piercing salvo onto a Yamato. So, from what I can tell, it does seem that the Katusov's 152mm shells have pretty solid penetration numbers. Still, I mean, battleships are not really the Katusov's main targets. From the games I've played with her so far, her ideal target seems to be destroyers and other cruisers. So let's take a look at how she performs in that kind of situation. So here we go. I got into a battle, and a very strange one at that, where it was pretty much all cruisers and two carriers. Um, so no battleships and no destroyers to worry about. In this kind of battle, I think the Katusov does really, really well. One, she has those nice penetrating guns, where the armor piercing damage is very, very consistent, and also her rate of fire is nice. So. When you're going up against purely cruisers, you're going to see pretty consistent damage and your damage output is also going to be pretty consistent. Up close, her rate of fire and the ability to pen citadels is going to help win some fights. And of course, you've always got those desperation torpedoes if you need them. Although I don't actually have destroyers in this battle, I've actually had a chance to run into destroyers in other battles. And I do have to say that if the destroyer gets within your range and gets spotted, then they really quickly become food because the Katusov is very much like a Cleveland and if a destroyer gets really close to a Cleveland, they get eaten alive by the high explosive. So, destroyer is not really a problem. Although, not having a scout plane can be problematic at times as there are situations where you want to get close, maybe launch a scout plane, see what's over the island. You can't do that in the Katusov, so that does hurt at times. Um, but again, uh, if you happen to get into certain areas where it's up close and personal and you are able to see the destroyers, you can handle them relatively with ease. Now, Aerial Ace here is in a Mikhail Kutusov, and this part, the smoke, it helps when you're coming under this much fire. And when you're coming under this much fire, the ability to deploy smoke and then just disappear from the enemy's sights is really, really helpful. In my case here, I used a smoke and started to turn around and deploy some more smoke and that hopefully should get me out of trouble. Now, I am going to blink in and blink out, get spotted, get unspotted a few times, but as long as it gets the attention of the enemy ships away from me, then I should be alright. Once again, gotta remind you guys that it does have a short duration smoke, so don't treat it like destroyer smoke and sit in it forever and keep shooting while exposing your broadside. Use the opportunity to get into a slightly better position and make sure that you can escape. That last salvo against the attack over there, six, almost 6,500 damage with armor piercing, so it's not bad. Now, remember that earlier I was talking about how big the Katusov was, right? And as you can tell, the Katusov really is a big ship, and she makes a really big target. 
This is not made much better by the fact that her turn radius is also rather huge. I think her turn radius of 760 meters is larger than most of the other tier 8 heavy cruisers. In fact, I believe her turn radius is 100 meters larger than the New Orleans. So that's something that I'm not really all that big of a fan of. It's the fact that the Katusov is this really oversized light cruiser that handles sort of like a heavy cruiser. Uh, I mean, her maneuverability in terms of rudder shift is fine and her speed is fine, but just that turning radius sometimes can be an issue, especially when you're trying to dodge torpedoes from a destroyer. You don't really turn all that quickly. So, I mean, that's my problem, I think, with the Katusov, is she's got nice things about the ship. She's got the smoke, which is kind of nice. Her AP seems to be pretty solid, um, and her rate of fire is obviously good with her guns. The arc is good. Uh, you know, the, the shells travel to target reasonably quickly. Her AA, as of the moment, is actually pretty good, but I just don't think that the ship is great. If you compare her to the nearest tier 8 premium ship in the same sort of category, and the cost range, you'll be talking about the Otago, and I think the Otago is a vastly superior ship. Otago's 203mm guns, while it will not have the rate of fire of the 152mm guns, have higher rates of setting fires, has better HE damage, and if it's citadels, it will do better armor-piercing damage. The Otago has better torpedoes, the Otago has the HP heal, the Otago has a catapult fighter. And I think, sort of, all in all, the Katsusov is just a very average ship. She sort of fits the, the, the saying, you know, the jack of all trades, can do a little bit of everything, master of none kind of thing. That, to me, is what the Katsusov feels like. She's just a little bit alright at doing stuff. But there's something else that can do it better. If you watch this engagement against these Clevelands, sure, I'm going to put in decent salvos with armor piercing, but had I had, let's say, an Otago and I was firing 8-inch armor piercing, I think I would have done better damage. So you're probably going to ask the question, well, what's the ship's playstyle? How can I get the most out of the ship? And I mean, the best answer I can give you so far, and this might change if I play her even more, although I don't think so, but maybe it will. But so far my experience with the ship is that she seems to do better as like a, a quasi-support ship, almost. Like she's going to hide behind other ships that are going to be more of a threat than her. And then she can use her rate of fire and her guns to help out. She seems to really, really fit that role. Um, although even as a support ship, I would almost grade her as a second-rate support ship. Because I don't think she does... A job that is going to be superior to the other tier 8 ships uh, considering you know the Mogami has those 155s which are absolutely lethal in setting fires and rate of fire the Otago is a fantastic ship the Hipper has that amazing armor piercing shells so for me the Katusov feels like it doesn't really have that place at the higher tiers she doesn't really have something that makes her stand out. Shall, shall I even say that? Like, she just doesn't really stand out for me. If you think about the role historically of light cruisers, they were meant to keep up with their destroyers, they were meant to engage, you know, other destroyers and, and help them out and things like that. But in World of Warships, there's a couple of things that causes that not to work. One is that World of Warships is one of those decisive battles where, you know, massive fleets clash with each other, and that really doesn't suit the light cruiser all that well, first of all. And second, the destroyers in the game, especially some of the destroyers, like the Russian ones, are so incredibly fast that light cruisers don't really have the chance to do their, their actual role of being able to hunt down destroyers and kill them. So, for me, I feel like the Katusov is a ship you would get if you're really in the need of a Soviet cruiser to help level your crew. So, final decision on whether this is a buy, no buy ship, I would say do not buy. The ship is 
at best the sort of jack of all trades mediocre ship i would stay away from it there's better ships to spend money on at this particular tier namely the otago again i uh, hope you enjoyed this ship review episode you all have a really good week and i'll talk to all of you again soon